Hi, my love. So good to have you back. Welcome to today's story time with me, Sharo. Today, I'm going to tell you a story which I believe children of all age can relate to, and even adults like me. Because when I was growing up, I had similar experiences, and I was a child back then. I didn't see the bigger picture. I was sad and upset at times. But now, when I look back, I realize that it all helped me to shape my character, to build my personality, my inner self. So, what I want you to take from this story today is no matter how difficult circumstances may be, it's all going to be okay. And no matter how bad and how tough it is, always try to be kind to yourself and to others too. And choose happiness. Okay? So, with that let's begin our story our story is called those shoes and it is written by Mary Beth Bowles here we go I have dreams about those shoes black high tops two white stripes grandma I want them there's no room for wants around here just need grandma says and what you need are new boots for winter. Nikhil comes to school in those shoes. He says he's the fastest runner now, not me. I was always the fastest before those shoes came along. Sange comes to school in those shoes. Eric and I count how many times Sange goes to the bathroom. Seven times in one day. Just so he could walk up and down the hall real slow. Next, Ashis and Chiring each get a pair. Then one day, in the middle of football, one of my shoes comes apart. Looks like you could use a new pair, Jeremy. Mr. T, the guidance counselor, says. He brings out a box of shoes and other stuffs he has for kids who need things. He helps me find the only shoes that are of my size. Velcro like the ones my little cousin, Minnie, wears. They have an animal on them from a cartoon I don't think any kid ever watched. When I come back to the classroom, Nikhil takes one look at my Mr. T shoes and laughs. And so do Chiring and Sange and everyone else. The only kid not laughing at me is Eric Lama. At home, Grandma says, How kind of Mr. T. I nod and turn my back. I'm not going to cry about any dumb shoes. But when I'm writing my spelling words later, every word looks like the word shoes. And my grip is so tight on my pencil, I think it might bust. On Saturday, Grandma says, Let's check out those shoes you're wanting so much. I got a little bit of money set aside. Might be enough. You never know. At the shoe store, Grandma turns those shoes over so she can check the price. When she sees it, she sits down heavy. And maybe they wrote it down wrong, I say. Grandma shakes her head. Then I remember the thrift shops. What if there's a rich kid who outgrew his or got two pairs for Christmas and had to give one of them away? We ride the bus to the first thrift shop. Black cowboy boots, pink slippers, sandals, high heels, every kind of shoes except the ones I want. We ride the bus again to the second thrift shop. Not a pair of those shoes in sight. Around the corner is the third thrift shop. I can see something in the window. Black shoes with two white stripes. High tops. Perfect shape. Just perfect shades for me. And 400 rupees. Those shoes! My heart is pounding hard as I take off my shoes and hitch up my baggy socks. How exciting, Grandma says. 
What size are they? I shoved my foot into the first shoe, curling my toes to get my heel in. I don't know, but I think, I think it'll fit me. My knees on the floor and feels from my toes at the end of the shoes. Oh, Jeremy, she says, I can't spend money on shoes that don't fit. I pull the other shoes on and try to walk around. They're, they're okay, I say, holding my breath and praying that my toes would fall off right then and there. But my toes don't fall off. I buy them anyway with my own money and I squeeze them on and limp to the bus stop. At home a few days later, Grandma puts a new pair of winter boots in my closet and doesn't say a word about my too big feet shuffling around in my too small shoes. Sometimes shoes stretch, I say. Grandma just smiles and gives me a hug. I check every day, but those shoes don't stretch. I have to wear the shoes which Mr. T gave to me to school instead. One day during math, I glance at Eric Lama's shoes. One of them is taped up and his feet look smaller than mine. After school, I head to the park to think. Eric is there, the only kid who didn't laugh at my Velcro shoes which Mr. T gave. We shoot baskets. A loose piece of tape on Eric's shoes smacks the concrete every time he jumps. I think I'm not going to do it. We leap off the swings. I'm not going to do it. I'm thinking in my head. We race from one end of the playground to the other. I am not going to do it, I say. Do what? Eric says, breathing hard. <sighs> Grandma calls me for dinner and invites Eric over too. After dinner, he spies my shoes. How come you don't wear them? Eric asks. I shrug. My hands are sweaty. I can feel him wishing those shoes were his. That night, I'm awake for a really, really long time thinking about Eric. When morning comes, I try on my shoes one last time. Before I can change my mind, the shoes are in my coat. Snow is beginning to fall as I run across the street to Eric's house. I put the shoes in the front of his door, push the doorbell and I run. At school, Eric is smiling big in his brand new shoes. I feel happy when I look at his face and mad when I look at my Velcro shoes. But later, when it's time for a short break, something happens. Everywhere there is snow. Leave your shoes in the hall and change into your boots, the teacher announces. Leave your shoes in the hall? It's then I realize. I have in my backpack new snow boots. New black boots that no kid has ever worn. Standing in line to go for the short break. Eric leans forward and says, thank you. And then I look at Eric, I smile, and I ask him to go on a race. And I say, let's race. And then we start racing in the snow. That day I realized that my grandmother loves me so much that she gave me what I needed even before I knew it. The winter boots, perfect for the winter. And I was so happy that I was able to help my friend Eric get a new pair of shoes and he thanked me for giving him the shoes because he knew I wanted it, I loved it so much but I gave it to him and he was able to use it. So for that he was very grateful to me and that was probably the best memory of that winter. The end.